but it's it's not something that most people are capable of doing without help. It's, it's it's not one of those things where you can say, oh, let's read a book on scaling and now we can scale. It's just it's just too hard to do that. Welcome everybody to another episode of Real Agile RBS. I'm your host, Peter Saddington at Agile Peter, and I'm with my colleague, Agile Bob, Bob Hartman, both of us from Agile for All. We love answering your frequently asked questions around Agile and whether it's real or it's BS. Today we want to take on a topic that both Bob and I have had extensive experience in working with large companies and large teams. I'll give you, we'll give you guys some context. 250 plus people on a project. Is that real agile or is that BS? I'll let you take the first crack at it, Bob. Well, um, <laughs> so I think the first thing I have to say is if you have 250 people on a big project, you're probably looking at the project wrong. So right <laughs> off the bat, I'm going to say, I'm going to call BS on this. I think you're trying to scale agility to a larger group, but it's difficult to impossible for that larger group to be truly agile without a lot of work. Now there's lots of frameworks out there, as you know, Peter, there's, there's safe and less and scrum at scale and Nexus and whatever else is out there. Dad, there's probably 20 different scaling frameworks, but this different scaling frameworks tend to lessen your agility as you scale larger. And that's why I would call this a little bit BS. I think it's possible to try to be agile on a very large team, but you have to really understand what you're trying to scale. And it would mean organizational changes and not just changes to how teams work. So that's, that's why I'm going to call a bit of BS here. And mostly because in my experience, I haven't seen it done in a truly agile way. It's like the company is going to remain being non-agile while the teams are going to try to be agile. And we've got this, this tension between them that makes no agility possible. If the entire organization is going to be agile and you're going to have larger groups that are going to be agile, that can probably work but it's just not the norm. I think, I think it, there's, there, it's, so I want to make sure that I qualify the semantics here because I think it, act, it, it actually matters. The, what, has, what, we, what has been written down and what uh, Bob and I are pulling from here for everyone out there, we're pulling from the sentence that says 250 people on a project. It's not a team, it's a project. And so given that semantic I think it's important to understand that when it comes to scaling Agile, Agile really is team-based. It's small teams. Now, you can have multiple, multiple, multiple teams that, that add up to 250 people on a project. But then, that, then, that come, then this, this idea emerges that can 250 people, dispersed upon multiple teams, can we work in a true Agile fashion? And I would say, because I've... I wouldn't say I've seen it perfect, but I've seen it at a client that I had years ago up in North Carolina that with 250 people on a project, we can act in many uh, ad, agile ways. We can, we, can, we can live the values. We can, we can do the right ceremonies. We can have the right artifacts. We can have the right conversations. We can have the right iterations. But I would agree with you, Bob, that it is really hard holistically for 250 people to move together in an agile fashion. I think what you have is you, ha you end up having in a lot of ways, you have all of these disparate teams that are agile in and of themselves, but it's hard to move 250 people. I, I often, I, I use this um, analogy in my classes with large companies. Imagine having a, a horde, like a crowd of 250 people walking down any street. And I tell them to think about what's a street that, that's close to you that you can completely visualize. And I have them visualize it. And I say, what, is it, what would it look like to have 500 people walk down that street? Would they start bumping into signs and start bumping into mailboxes? Would they start going down alleyways? Would they start thinking about different things? That's what happens when you have that many people is you have that many different motivators, incentives, ideas, you know, uh, squirrels that they're going to be chasing after. It's really hard to align that many people in one project. And so I generally bring up the question, should we extract teams? Should we make them smaller? What's the answer? So I, I'm going to leave that. To, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you Bob that question. If you have 250 people on the project, what would be one of the first things that you would do to make that smaller, i.e. maybe even more manageable? 
Well, I think we run up against a scientific number, and I don't remember the name of the number, but isn't it like the Dunbar number, right? 50 and then 150 or something like that. So I would be trying to get the, the number of people working on any portion of the project to be much smaller. I think in groups of 50 to 150, you can definitely definitely see much higher agility than you can in a group of 250. Mm -hmm. So how do we structure it so that we can, uh, we can do this in smaller chunks? A uh, chaos report, I remember reading one from a few years ago, and there was a line in it that went something like this. It said, in any large project, there are dozens of smaller projects dying to get out. Mm -hmm. So why don't we break it into smaller projects and attack them with smaller groups of people? It also let, allows us to, to deliver value more iteratively on those things if we structure it correctly. Uh, my problem with 250 plus is we just, there's drift, right? I mean, yeah. it's just, it's hard to keep that many people aligned over a long period of time. 150 doesn't seem like a big difference, but it's, you know, not quite half, but now we're within the realm of possibility and 50 certainly within the realm of possibility. I'm not saying you can't be agile with 250 people. It's just, you start to do some overhead things to, to manage it all that, be, that just inherently makes you less agile. So how can we break this into, uh, certainly starting with small teams, right? Let's have teams, five, six, seven people. We're gonna, we might have dozens of them, but we got to start at that level of understanding, let's have really small teams that we coordinate through our product backlog and our roadmap, rather than having 250 people try to work on the same thing together, because that's, that's the overhead of communication there just is astronomical, it'll never work. Um, so there's lots of things you can do, but it's complicated. It's it maybe even complex. It's not a simple problem or people wouldn't be having trouble with it. Mm. Um, Chaos Report said something like, if a project is gonna cost more than $10 million, sometimes the chances of a success are statistically negligible. Mm. So, you know, $10 million project, 250 people, you're gonna get $10 million spent pretty quick. Um, you're just, your odds of success are just way low. You have to be really careful. And, and I like the fact that you brought up this idea of drift. I mean, we also have to recognize the 80-20 rule. I mean, out of those 250 people, how many of those are really providing 80% of the value, right, in the work? Maybe, let, let's just be generous. Let's say 50 out of those 250 are basically the core drivers of value in, 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 um, in, the, in the project. And so you have, you have all, again, I like, I like the fact that you bring this up is that when you have that many people, your operational overhead becomes larger and larger and larger. And you end up spending more time on doing less agile things like management, oversight, reporting, you know, check-ins, verification, human resources stuff. I mean, it's just, it gets, it can get pretty hairy pretty quickly is when you're working with this many people. And so real agile RBS, 250 people on a project, in my opinion, I'll, I'll let you answer uh, finally here. Uh, in my opinion, not real agile, look for opportunities to break that, break that project down, whether it's from the project standpoint or the resource standpoint, the people standpoint, make, put it into smaller, more manageable chunks, both on the people side and the work side, and you'll, be, you'll have more throughput, you'll have more flow, you'll have more value delivered, guaranteed. What do you say, Bob? I think that uh, from every, well, not every, but almost every implementation I've ever seen that was that large, it was definitely BS. I think there are ways to make it be more real agile, but it's, it's not something that most people are capable of doing without help. It's, it's, it's not one of those things where you can say, oh, let's read a book on scaling and now we can scale. It's just, it's just too hard to do that. Um, I, I don't, so I think it's gonna be BS for the majority of people. You need to be really careful, figure, figure out how you can take that big project and make it into lots of smaller projects. You'll have a much better chance for success. Absolutely, absolutely. Let us know your comments, your ideas. Let us know if we can help. We've, we've gone down this road before with many clients in the past. You are here with Agile Bob and at Agile Peter on this episode of Real Agile or BS. Smash the like button, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.